Take a look at Roku. John mentions it. Company reported better than expected earnings for the third quarter, raises their full year guide. Anthony Wood, of course, is the CEO and joins us this morning. Anthony, it's good to have you back. Thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, stock is uh, back to levels we last saw in March. Uh, I think uh, streaming hours up 56, active accounts up 47. Uh, what does it say about the conversation we continue to have about direct-to-consumer and some of these legacy media companies? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we are in the midst of a big secular change in video distribution. It's moving from legacy TV platforms to streaming, and it's disrupting the industry. It's caught, and it's creating a lot of opportunity for streaming companies like Roku. You know, our platform business, which is primarily advertising and content distribution, doubled in the quarter. Uh, so things are going great. Anthony, can you tell what is really driving loyalty on your platform? Can you break that down for us a bit? Because there's talk about, well, a, a third of the streaming hours on Roku are Netflix, and you can sort of get Netflix everywhere these days on your competitors' platforms with cable providers like our parent Comcast, but you're finding something that's causing your results uh, and, and your growth to really be driven. Isolate that for us. What is it? Yeah, so Netflix is popular, and like you said, Netflix is not that hard to find as a consumer, but there's over 6,000 different apps or channels, streaming channels on Roku, uh, a huge selection, you know, anything you want to watch. And so as consumers move their mainstream TV behavior from watching traditional linear TV to streaming, they're, they're watching a wide variety of content and diversity of viewing is growing tremendously. Uh, and, you know, streaming is just a better way to watch TV, and that's just driving a lot of interest in Roku, which is the leading streaming platform. Like you mentioned, active accounts is how we build scale. That was up 47% year over year in the quarter, and that's really driven by two things. One is we sell a lot of Roku TVs, or our partners sell a lot of Roku TVs, and we license the platform to them, uh, which is doing really well. Uh, one in four smart TVs sold in Q1 we're Roku TVs, up from one in five last year. And then of course we sell streaming players as well. Anthony, given its exclusive deal for smart TVs with Best Buy, Amazon, friend or foe? Uh, well, Amazon a, is, a, is a friend and a foe. I mean, you know, <laughs> they're, a, they're a big partner. <laughs> we sell a lot of products on, uh, on Amazon.com. We're a big distributor of Amazon Instant Video, so they're a big customer of ours. We do compete with them uh, on, you know, on the platform side, but we're doing extremely well. We're the number one streaming platform. You know, we expect to sell more Roku TVs this year uh, than we did last year through all channels, including Best Buy. So, you know, it's just the, the main thing that's happening in, in sort of the platform side of our business is that, is that in, the, in TVs, uh, TV manufacturers are moving away from sort of their homegrown built solutions to a licensed solution. So that means we think virtually every TV company will end up licensing an OS, just like all smartphones have an OS. And, you know, Roku is the leading licensor of OS, so it's just a great position to be in. Every time you're on, Anthony, we try to convince you to get into the original content game. You always <laughs> say no. Uh, has the argument for doing that uh, gotten even weaker given the amount of money others are spending and some would argue uh, the level of crowding we've seen in content in some areas. You know, one of the cool, cool, the great things about streaming is it's just giving consumers a lot more choice. There's more money going into originals. We're seeing more original content, more, more options for consumers. That's, that's why consumers are picking streaming as a way to watch TV. I mean, we, we you know, our focus as a, as a streaming platform is to bring as much content as we can uh, onto the platform, and we do that with partner, by partnering, like you said, partnering with other companies. We don't produce our own originals. One of the biggest uh, uh, ways that we've sort of innovated recently in bringing content to consumers is the Roku channel, which is where we aggregate free movies and TV shows, as supported free movies and TV shows, and that's, that's really doing well. Anthony, where does music come in? Uh, you, at, at the same time as you are making this push in streaming video, there, there's this other thing going on with Spotify and Amazon, some familiar names among your competitors in that space. In the past, even on cable platforms, we've seen streaming, streaming music channels. Do you expect there to be any kind of tie-up between streaming video platforms like yours and streaming music, whether it's bundles or, or some other go-to-market that ties these together for consumers? Well, we do see a lot, of, a lot of our customers using their Roku to listen to music, even though it's a TV. 
Um, often the TV is, is the only speakers in a room or the best speakers in a room. So, you know, uh, movie, music streaming services are very popular on Roku. And audio is an important part of the TV experience. And so, you know, one of the things we announced at CES was that we're going to start making it really easy to add better audio to your TV. And, you know, Roku controls the software in the TV and in the speakers we're working on with our partners, we'll control the software in those speakers. And by controlling both ends, it makes it really, it's really powerful. It allows us to, to deliver a much easier audio experience to consumers and a better quality audio. So making audio on your TV better and easier is something we think we can do to keep making our TV platform even better. Anthony, I want to go back to your earnings for a moment. Uh, you did post a loss, though it was a narrower loss uh, than in previous quarters. You told a market watch that the plan is to grow the number of active accounts on the platform by offering deep discounts on dongles, other streaming gadgets, uh, as you look to push even further into the platform side of the business. How does that play out on the path to profitability? You know, we've, we've said that we are, uh, you know, we're, we're aiming to, to operate the company on a, on a break-even EBITDA basis, break even EBITDA, EBITDA basis because we want to keep investing as much of our gross profit as possible into this opportunity. I mean, the world is moving from traditional TV platforms to streaming. It's a huge opportunity to be the world's leading streaming platform. So we want to make sure we keep our eye on that ball. And, um, you know, so in terms of, in terms of um, lowering prices, we do have a strategy of bringing down our hardware prices so we sell more units. Uh, you know, for our players. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's great about Roku is we've, we've built a purpose-built operating system for TV. We put a lot, a lot of effort in building the best TV operating system. We have the only purpose-built operating system for TV. Everyone else ports their phone operating systems. And the result, one of the, one of the results of that is that we've put a lot of effort into lower hardware costs. So we can actually sell the lowest price streaming player at $29 with excellent performance and still make a positive gross margin when most of our competitors subsidize to get to you know, within striking distance of that price point. So we think we're very well positioned in terms of, you know, driving scale of our active accounts and price is one of our, uh, one of our levers there. Finally, Anthony, this chess game between Disney, Comcast and Fox, do you have any interest in seeing it turn out one way or the other or any prediction about it? Uh, Disney, Comcast and Fox are all big partners on Roku. They all have uh, apps and channels on Roku. Uh, they're great partners. I think, I think you know, probably, I mean, I, I think the big picture here is that, again, the world is moving from legacy TV to streaming. It's causing big changes in the industry. And so, you know, legacy players are, are, are repositioning. That they are. Uh, we just don't know how yet. <laughs> Anthony, thanks so much. Good to see you Hello. again. Anthony Wood of Roku uh, talking to us after Thank the uh, company's earnings. John? Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.